At this point, we will start the simulator and you are free to use the system and take actions as you see fit. At the end of the round, you will once again want to gauge how well you're doing and try to improve your performance. You'll probably have converted and released all your initial plan orders, and your production team has most likely also completed production of all of them. At the very least, we need to generate a new production plan, as well as acquire the extra raw materials required to execute that new plan. We could simply generate the same production plan as before, replace the inventory of products we started with. However, with 60 days worth of reporting data to analyze, we may want to consider how much of each product we want to keep in stock. Some products are better sellers than others, and you might want to focus on those and less so on the others. We will now learn all these things, how to adjust our inventory targets or replenish strategy to put it in different words, how to generate production plans, and how to procure additional raw materials. We'll start with planning, our product mix strategy. Transaction code MD61 is where you enter the target inventory replenishment level for each of your products. In SAP, these are called planned independent requirements. These are then used by the material requirements planning process to generate both a production plan and a procurement plan. We will learn more about these shortly. For now, let's just concentrate on adjusting the planned independent requirements. In SAP, we use the create planned independent requirements function transaction MD61 to do this. We want to manage the forecasts for all our materials at the same time. They've been placed into a product group for this purpose. At the initial selection screen, choose the product group selection option and enter the product group. It's the same as your company code, your team letter repeated twice. At the planning table screen, you will see a schedule of months. Only the second column should have any values. Here, you can adjust these from their current values. Only modify the values in the second column. To carry more inventory of a product, increase the independent requirement. To carry less inventory, reduce the value. You could even discontinue a product entirely. Simply delete or zero the independent requirement. As always, don't forget to save your changes. We now need to generate the new production plan based on our replenishment strategy. We can have the ERP system calculate how much of each product to produce based on the replenishment targets, current inventory levels, and any production orders still incomplete. We run the MRP process in SAP to do this work for us. Run the MRP transaction. Its technical name is MD01. The behavior of the MRP can be controlled with a variety of parameters. For our purposes, we must set these to those that we need. Confirm that the parameters are as follows. Plant, your plant. Processing key, N-E-U-P-L. Create purchase requisition, one. Schedule lines, three. Create MRP list, one. Planning mode, three. Display material list. Check this if the box is not already checked. Once you've filled in all the details, you will need to click on enter to begin the MRP process. A warning notice is displayed at the bottom of the page, advising you to check your parameters before confirming. Do this and click on enter again to proceed. One further confirmation that you want to start at the planning run is asked for. Click on continue. After SAP completes the planning process, you will see information on what planning items have been created. Note that new plan orders have been created. This is our new production plan you'll be able to see these new orders in CO41, the Collective Conversion of Plan Orders transaction. However, you will be unable to convert and release them. Why would that be? Remember, we can't release new production orders until we have the required raw materials. We need to place orders with our suppliers. Fortunately, the MRP has also done the work to calculate how many of each raw material we need to purchase. It has created purchase requisitions. A requisition is a purchasing plan, much like a plan order is a production plan. We also need to take action to put our plan into effect by converting the requisitions into purchase orders and sending those to the suppliers. This is a simple process, since our suppliers always have a lot of inventory. We can simply send them the complete order, no matter how large, anytime we like. SAP provides a simple way to accept all purchase requisitions and aggregate them to create new purchase orders. 
the transaction ME59N automatically creates consolidated purchase orders for each vendor. The default selection parameters for this report are all that are needed. Simply click on the Execute icon to have SAP perform the conversion process. You will see a summary of the purchase orders created. Why were only two purchase orders created? Even though we had one requisition for each ingredient, each raw material, we only have two vendors that supply all of these. So, we only need to place a single order with all the items for each supplier. So, only two purchase orders are required. At some point during the simulation, you are bound to see a no suitable requisition found at the bottom level of your screen. The system is telling you that there were no new requisitions that needed to be processed. To see this message again, execute the procedure again. Since you've just converted all the existing requisitions into purchase orders you needed and have not rerun the MRP, there are no new requisitions to be processed. If you encounter this message, either you have already run the process, forgotten to run the MRP, or the MRP has not generated any requisitions. This last case would be if you have sufficient inventory and purchase orders in the system already when you ran the MRP. Just as the MRP generates new plan orders for production to take your inventory back to replenishment targets, it only generates requisitions, a new purchasing plan, if you actually need more raw materials. If you already have enough in current stock, enough on the way, or undelivered purchase orders, then why order more than you need? If you have any doubts, retrace your steps and ensure you have run all the transactions properly and in the correct sequence. Now that we have purchase orders, we can start to release production orders again, right? Not quite. A purchase order is a request to purchase. We need to allow time for the delivery of the order. The simulator plays the role of the supplier, shipper, and our own warehouse staff. It takes three to five days for the raw materials to arrive at our warehouse after they've been ordered. Only then can we release new production orders. The inventory report can be used to see if new raw materials have been delivered. There is a purchase order tracking report that we can use to see what purchase orders we have in the system and track their status. It's better for monitoring raw material deliveries. The purchase order tracking report shows the list of all the purchase orders in the system. It shows the quantity of each material ordered and the price you paid. The delivery or completion status informs you if the materials have been delivered to your warehouse or not. The goods column informs you on which simulation day the goods were delivered or will be delivered. The payment column informs you when you must pay for them. Let's recap. You must now manage the sales process as well as control production release as you did before. You must now also manage the planning and procurement cycle. You can also do this as often as you like, not only at the beginning of each round. You may run the MRP and convert requisitions to purchase orders as often as you like. Continue to try to balance your rate of sales with production. Run your planning and procurement process before you run out of production orders. You need to allow for the delivery lead time of raw materials or your production team will be idle, sacrificing valuable production capacity. Remember, customers will not place advanced orders, so a product not produced is a missed sale. A key success factor to maximizing your profit is to ensure that you always have inventory available for sale. Remember, your customers will not accept back orders. This is typically the last round of the simulation. Your instructor will inform you if that's not the case. There's no penalty for having inventory at the end. Those products simply remain an asset on your balance sheet. So sell sensibly and continue to produce right until the end. Take everything that you've learned and do your best. Good luck and keep in mind that there are no losers, only learners.